That's right. Well, what we're hearing from people on the ground is that it's very, very difficult to actually get to the airport in order to get on one of these evacuation flights. So, of course, we saw the first evacuation flight leaving Kabul for the Middle East, uh, organised by the Australian government. It left in the early hours of this morning. But there were only 26 people on board. And it seems that one of the reasons, um, aside from the fact that it was a somewhat smaller plane used by the government, but one of the reasons so few people were taken out was that at least some couldn't get to the tarmac and into the terminal to get on the flight. Now, the reasons, well, there are many. The first is that there are multiple levels of security to actually get into the airport, not only the police, but also the Taliban. And at the final level, the US military have all set up checkpoints, security checkpoints to stop people from going in, or at the very least to check their paperwork. Uh, and many people said that uh, they, even when they showed their Australian passports, the Taliban simply wouldn't let them through. In one instance, uh, when they came through with their Australian passport, they said the US military wouldn't let them through. So there's obviously a lot of confusion about that. On top of that, there's just a broader chaos and violence of Kabul at the moment, particularly around the airport, where there are apparently thousands of people milling about at various times, all trying to get in. That uncertainty, that tension, that general chaos has occasionally exploded into violence. Uh, in some instances, we've been sent videos of uh, soldiers firing into the air, in one instance, into a crowd. Uh, and that chaos and violence has basically made it impossible for some people to get through. We spoke to one Afghan-Australian uh, who's who had two relatives, uh, both female, who were trying to get through. The moment they ran into that violence, they simply felt that they had to, to flee, so they couldn't get on the plane. So this all speaks to the difficult uh, situation on the ground, the enormous security challenges and logistical challenges that Australian army uh, officials uh, and uh, civilian officials have to grapple with as they try and get this evacuation program off the ground. So, Stephen, what does it then mean for people that worked with our forces who had been promised a way out, some form of protection? What chances have they got of leaving? Well, they do have some chances of getting through. We know that some got through in the first flight that, that took off with only 26 uh, people on board. Some of those, we don't know how many, were locally engaged Afghan staff. So, they clearly managed to get through the various checkpoints uh, with the documentation that they had, got to the plane and, and got out of the country. So it's certainly not impossible, just difficult. Uh, but we are hearing from some Afghan interpreters who worked for the Australian Army back uh, back when, uh, when we were fighting in Afghanistan. Uh, and some of them say that they not only uh, you know, feel like they have no chance of getting through the, uh, the blockades that have been put up by the Taliban, they're fearful that um, if they were to approach the Taliban and they discovered they worked for Australia, that they'd essentially be arrested on site. Um, but they're also anxious about the fact that they've had, in some cases, little or no communication from the Australian government. One interpreter we spoke to today said he'd had absolutely no communication. He'd put in multiple emails and phone calls to the Australian government and, and had heard nothing back. Now, that's not a universal experience. We do know that some uh, Afghan locally engaged staff have been closely engaging with the Australian government, have been you know, in close communication and feel like they're confident they will get on a flight. But in some cases, some people feel like not only do they have little to no chance of getting through, but also they've got no clear guidance from the Australian government about what they need to do or whether they're even entitled to get on the plane. So there is enormous uncertainty in Kabul. It's not universal. It's not across all people who've worked for the Australian government. But amongst some cohorts, there's great uncertainty and fear about the future. Other countries that were part of the coalition uh, that uh, were stationed in Afghanistan and fought in Afghanistan have talked about upping their refugee intakes. What is Australia saying they're going to do? So Australia made a commitment today that it would basically guarantee 3,000 places within the existing humanitarian refugee program uh, for Afghan nationals. Now, that's something that's been welcomed cautiously by uh, many refugee groups. Um, they say that that's a good start, but they also argue that it doesn't go nearly far enough. They point out that other countries, including the UK and Canada, uh, have made more generous commitments. Uh, in both cases, 20,000 refugee places being made available uh, for Afghan refugees. And the argument from refugee groups is that 
That's the sort of commitment you need to see, given the fact that the Taliban have now seized power and given the enormous anxieties in that country about what that will mean for the rights of women and minorities, as well as children in that country. So the, uh, the government has made a, a commitment uh, to do this, but uh, the broad argument from advocates is that it isn't nearly enough. The other question, of course, is what happens with the, the broader uh, attempt to evacuate people in the near term? Uh, and the government is telling us that it's going to ramp up these flights uh, quite uh, substantially. The flight that went in today was a relatively medium or small size transport plane. The next planes that are coming in, we're told, are going to be larger ones. Uh, that are capable of taking many more people. And hopefully, particularly if those issues around the security of the perimeter are resolved, hopefully far more people can come through. But it's not just contingent on the Taliban and the police and the negotiations with the US military. It's also contingent upon the weather. Uh, and some poor weather is due to hit Kabul at the end of the week. That could further complicate things for the officials who are trying to get many more people out of Afghanistan and back to the relative safety of the Middle East and then to Australia. Stephen, good to talk to you. Thank you so much.